Welcome travelers, welcome to Bible Study Devotional BMX Flatland Learning, where you can learn um, a lot of these flatland tricks in many, many places. Um, right now we are riding in a 15 by 15 square foot area. I think some people might go, well, why am I not riding outside more, right? Well, first off, it's just really cold out there, and also... It's not a level surface, right? Um, out there, it's kind of more like a pyramid. And I guess if you do get into flatland, you do want to find a level surface because it gives you more of a consistent variable. Um, anyway, let's get into the Bible study. I was kind of actually like not really even feeling I was going to stream today because I'm kind of like tired and stuff. But you know what? We're going to try, right? We are going to try and do a streamy anyway, right? <laughs> We're going to try, right? Um, Okay, so let's see here. The verse, I did pick a random Bible verse today, and today was the verse of, which one was it? Mark sixteen fifteen, And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So let's go into Mark, Mark 16. Let's go into Mark 16. Um, I think we did do a Bible study uh, many moons ago on stream of Mark 16:15. But, you know what? It's been quite a bit and it's been a it's been a while since we've done done one. I think I need to re up on it anyway, right? Um, let's see here. Where is it? Why does it say that? Okay, yeah. There we go. And he said to them, "Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation." Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Interesting. Wow, that's so weird. Let me read this. Okay. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and, they, they, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, had taken, taken up into heaven and sat down at, at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. That's strange. Why? And and the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. That's so strange. I like don't really, I don't even remember that last part. And then it goes into Luke, right? So, so the Lord, if we think about it this way, right? The Lord's helping us to do all these things. Just like, you know, how he's trying to establish our steps and all that stuff, right? And it's so weird, right? It's so strange, like... You know, sometimes I get tripped out because, like, you know, sometimes when you do start getting deeper into the faith, you know, like how I always talk about, like, certain doors just seem like they just start closing or you just, a bunch of people just start, you know, hating on it or just, just people, it just gets really embarrassing and even humiliating at times and you just feel really cringy even doing it. But you know if you're trying to glorify the Lord that this is what the Lord would try and want one of you to at least try to do this stuff. Even though it's kind of hard at times, and even though it's embarrassing, uh, I guess it's something, I, you know, and, yeah, it's strange, right? Um, but, yeah, it's kind, of, it's, inter it's, it, it's kind of assuring, and it's kind of almost, like, uh, motivating knowing that the Lord, if we're trying to do his will, right, that he is going to try and help us, right? Like, he is going to try and help us, right? That's really cool to think about. Um, let's see here. I guess I should check to see if the stream is even working just so I don't end up talking a whole long, a whole long spew of things and then seeing if it, just noticing it, 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 it's not working anymore, right? Let's see here. Let's see if the stream is working. Is it working? Uh oh, here. Let's see. Okay, it is working. Um, okay. Well now, let's get into 
looking up a commentary on uh, what is it? Mark sixteen fifteen. 15. Um, some people have called this verse in particular the Great Commission that the Lord has basically commissioned us as believers to go and do. Isn't that, isn't that a trip, right? Isn't that a trip, like, to think about, right? Like, if the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, he came up to you and he's like, okay, I want you to do something, right? And he, and he, and he tells you to go and do these things, right? Isn't that a trip, man? Like, that is just such a trippy thing to think about, right? Um, okay, so Mark 16, 15, commentary. Let's see here. What commentaries have we not read, right? Oh, man, I wish there was a... I need a... <clears throat> I wish there was a thing, because normally, maybe I haven't done a Bible study on this one. Because normally when you read over something, it turns purple, right? None of these have turned purple, so. Huh. Okay, so we'll go on. This is on Bible Hub. This is the KJV version. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. See, the KJV version is very strange, right? The KJV says at the end of it, it says every creature, right? You know, you think they just go to every human, right? So are we, sometimes I wonder, are we to proclaim the gospel even to animals? I don't know, right? Who? Um, hmm, let's see, what commentary should we read? Uh, which one's this one? I guess we'll, let's read uh, McLaren's Expositions. The World Wide Commission. Mark sixteen fifteen. The missionary enterprise has been put on many bases. People do not like commandments, but yet it is a great relief and strength to come back to one and to answer all questions with, he bids me. Now these words of our Lord open up the whole subject of the universality of Christianity. Number one. The divine audacity of Christianity. Take the scene, a mere handful of men, whether the twelve or the five hundred brethren, is immaterial. How they have been recoiled when they heard the sweeping command, Go ye into all the world. It is like the apparent absurdity of Christ's quiet word. They need not depart. Give ye them to eat when the only visible stock of food was five loaves and two small fishes. As on that occasion, so in this final commandment, they take to Christ's presence into account, I am with you. See, isn't that, uh, that's, uh, so when I just read that paragraph right there, it actually, it, it is weird thinking about like the, that story of like, um, you know, the five loaves and the two small fishes, and everybody's going like, how is that even, that's not going to work, like all this stuff, right? And then somehow God make, and, it, and this is why I think, this is actually another aspect of the whole phrase of, you, you'll hear this phrase um, if you get deeper in the faith, and a lot of pastors always go, you know, God makes ways where there seems to be no way. And sometimes I wonder if there's like an aspect of God like testing people's faith. Right, like maybe he brings you into this, into this season where it seems like nothing's working, nothing's happening, and or maybe you're just receiving some small, s small portion of something, right? And 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 sometimes I wonder, is God testing in those seasons, like seeing, are you gonna have faith even when things are confusing, even when things are not working out right, or even when things seem impossible, right? It's it's uh it's an interesting one, right? It's in it's interesting to think about, and it's weird that that paragraph made me think about that, right? Even though he really didn't, it's weird that that paragraph made me think about all that stuff, and he didn't even really like go into it that way, right? So who knows, right? Let's get back to it. So note the obviously worldwide extent of Christ's claim of dominion. He had come into the world to begin with, that the world through him might be saved. If any man thirst, let him come. The parables of the kingdom of heaven are planned on the same grand scale. I will draw all men unto me. It cannot be, <clears throat> it cannot be disputed that Jesus lived and moved and had his 
being in the vision of a universal dominion. Here emerges the great contrast of Christianity with Judaism. Judaism was intolerant as all merely monotheistic faiths must be and sure of future universe, universality, but it was not proselytizing, not a missionary faith, nor is it so today. It is exclusive still. Muhammad, Muhammad Den, Muhammadanism is its fiery youth because monotheist, monotheistic was aggressive, but it enforced outward profession only and let the inner, inner life untouched. So it did not scruple to persecute as well to proselytize. Christianity is alone in calmly setting forth a universal dominion and in seeking it by the word alone. Put up thy sword in its sheath. The foundations of this bold claim, Christ's soul, soul and singular, singular relation to the whole race, there are profound truths embodied in this relation. There is implied the audacity of Christ for all. He is for all because he is the only and all-sufficient Savior. By his death, he offered satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name ect. The divine pur purpose of mercy for all, God will have all men to be saved, and to come to knowledge of the truth. See, that's the other weird thing. That one reminds me of the verse of you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? The, the adaption of the gospel message to all. It deals with all men as on one level. It addresses universal humanity unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. It speaks the same language of all sorts of men to all stages of society in all ages. Man, that sounds crazy, right? <laughs> all stages of society in all ages. Christianity has no estroic doctrine, no inner circle of the initiated. Consequently, it introduces a notion of privileged classes. That's weird. That's, that's strange that this guy writes... No inner circle of the initiated. Because sometimes it's weird because sometimes when you go into some churches, sometimes it feels like there is that, right? Or sometimes it even feels like, you know, I've heard some people say, well, you have to go to seminary, you have to do all this stuff. But then sometimes that even feels like that's even a sense of like being initiated or something. So what is this guy meaning by this? Does he mean like that anybody can go and do this kind of stuff? Yes, I guess so, right? Maybe I'm reading it wrong, but that's what it seems like he's saying. That, that it's for everybody, right? Note the history of Christianity and its relation and to the inferior downtrodden. Christianity has no belief in the existence of irreclaimable outcasts, but proclaims and glor glories in the possibility of winning any and all to the love which makes God-like. There is one Savior, and so there is one gospel for the whole world. Its vindication in facts. The history of the diffusion of the gospel at first is significant. Think of the varieties of civilization it approached and absorbed. See how it overcame the bonds of climate and language. How unlike Europe of today is to Europe of Paul's time. That is actually another trippy thing to think about, right? It's interesting thinking about literally like 2,000 years, all the different societies, all the different technologies, all the different crazy things, people living out in the wilderness, people living in million dollar mansions now, like all this, you know, it's just like you get the whole range of it. And for some reason, it's still going on. Like, you know, it's like the, the word is still, this, the word is still with us, right? Super fascinating, actually, to me to think about that, right? And I think that's another aspect of the scriptures, right? Because it, 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 it seems to hit so many people in different seasons of their life, right? Even to the point of you going through the most trialsome, burdensome things in your life, right? 
at times, this is actually when people look to the faith, right? It's interesting thinking that, you know, just observe when people start praying. You, you know, even people that, like, maybe um, don't believe at all, right? Like, imagine if you were falsely accused of something, right? And, and they're like, okay, we're going to put you into jail for 10 years or something like that. I'm sure I think a lot of people would be like, hey, man, like, whoa, like, this is some crazy stuff. And they're probably going to, you know, I, I mean, I would, I would assume that some people that maybe didn't believe would maybe, you know, ask of God and stuff for some help and stuff like that. Or like when uh, crazy things just start happening or just bad things, you know, this is when you kind of start seeing people, you know, look to God sometimes, right? Because there's nothing else to, sometimes there's nothing else to, at, at that moment, you know, had to ask for any help, right? And it's um, it's very interesting thinking about that, right? But it's also, you know, and sometimes I wonder if God, it, for my own life in particular, it, it, it seems like God almost like left me to my sins to to almost fester and rot in them, right? And just, just be completely poisoned to the point where I had to turn to God to be healed, right? Because I tried to heal myself basic maybe not with everything but you know i've tried to heal myself with so many other things things that people said that would heal me and i believed them and i did it and then they end up not healing me and then they forget about it and they say something else is going to heal me and then i do that and that doesn't work and then they forget about it and i forget about it and then i think the aspect of what's interesting about the faith is that there's like a collective body in thinking about the body of christ right Whereas if we get grafted in into believing in Christ, right, that we are ultimately to be used by Christ. And it's so weird to think that it's almost like learning a second language, right? And I know there's a lot of differences in denominations and all this crazy stuff, right? But overarching of all of it is the word, right? So if we get deeper into God's word, it's like, I'd like, from my observations, it seems like you can almost just go into any denomination, and if you really, you know, know the word and trust the word, you probably can get some help, even if you might not agree with everything that they say and all that stuff, right? Like, I think that's the other trippy thing about, you know, in some aspects of what I observed and went through, is like sometimes if you were to lose everything, right? Sometimes these books and stuff that said that they would heal you and all this stuff, right? I, I I can firmly say that if I were to lose everything and become homeless and just live on the streets, you know, all that stuff, right, that I know that believers would help me out. Like, I just know that there would be at least one believer out of all the believers that would help me out, right? And just knowing that, right, and I know it's not just one, it'd just be, it'd be many, many, many believers, right? And just knowing that fact and knowing the fact that there's so many believers, like so many places and regions and all that stuff it just it's really interesting right it's really interesting to think about sometimes i i wonder i've even had this thought i i drew some rpg characters right and there was this one rpg character i drew it's actually on my insta it's actually on my art instagram but it was like some chick with like a pegasus or something like that right and we went and i went deeper into like some of the lore on that stuff right <clears throat> and there was this one thing about um something about like if you want to travel far you want to or you if you want to travel far travel light or something like that right and i kind of had this thought of like uh imagine if christ wanted the churches almost to be like hubs or like beacons to where you know if you were traveling you could go and kind of like you know get some help if you uh you know like they'd be like kind of like beacons like you get some help but the problem is is i guess you know most churches only People only go to them on Sunday or on a Bible study throughout the week. And normally there's not a church. People don't do it every single day. That's what I've noticed. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the commentary. I, I don't even know how I digressed into all that stuff. Something in this commentary made me think of all that stuff. And see, that's what's also weird is like I'm reading this commentary, but it also um, it's making me think about all... And that's what's also weird, right? It's weird when we read something... And then also just thinking about all the things that it's also making you think about while you read this thing, right? It's just so strange. <laughs> oh, it's like a commentary in a commentary with past experiences and what your own thoughts, and it's very interesting. Okay, let's see here. Note, further that the history of missions vindicates 
the worldwide claim of the gospel. Think of the wonderful number of converts in the first 50 years of gospel preaching. The Roman Empire was Christianized in three centuries. See, that's actually what's also really, really trippy to think about. Even just thinking about the Roman Empire, right? Because in, if, you were, if you watch some documentaries on the Roman Empire, right? The Roman Empire actually um, equated all gods. They actually merged religions. And they wanted, um, so basically if you bowed the knee to the emperor, no matter what religion you were, they would accept you, right? And they started melding all these gods. And they, basically, if you, as long as you bowed the knee to the emperor, right, they would accept you and your religion would be, like, put in within that society, right? But then it's strange because I'm pretty sure it was... Um, who was it? Was it Constantine? I think it was Constantine. And he's the one that changed everything, right? Because he started, he actually converted and became a believer, right? And what's strange to think about is the entire thing of the Roman Empire. They started believing and they adopted, you know, Christ. And it's got so strange because at one point they were like the ones like persecuting it, right? So it's, it's very odd to think about, right? That it's that, it was that powerful. It was so powerful, you know, the words of, you know, the Bible and all this, and just the words of God, quite frankly. And, and it literally was so powerful that it changed entire civilizations from the foundations of the core of them. And it's just such a trip, right? It's just so crazy to think about. Okay, let's see here. Where are we at? Recall the... Oh, okay, we just read that. South Seas, Romance, The Missions. The character two of Modern Converts is as good as it is that of Paul's. The gospel in this century produces everywhere fruits like those which are brought forth in Asia and Europe in the first century. The success had been in every field. None has been abandoned as hopeless. The Moravians in Greenland, the Hottentots, the Patagonians. Christianity has constantly appealed to all classes of society. Not many noble, but some in every age and land. See, that's the other crazy thing, right? Even thinking about that. Even thinking about the aspect of just this. Let's just read it again. It's so crazy thinking about, you know... The, mission, the, the, the great commission that the Lord puts us under, right? And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation, right? Or to every creature, right? I mean, that very, those words, it's such a trip thinking that Mark wrote them down. <laughs> and just thinking about from this aspect, 2,000 years of, of people reading this and being inspired to go and try and do that, right? Even to this very present moment where we're reading it right here, right? It's just such a, it's just, man. There's, for some odd reason, like, it's weird because I've read so many other books, right? Even, like, all these books that, even when I had to go to, like, therapy and all this stuff, these people would make me uh, counselors and stuff like this because I got in trouble with the law, right? And all this crazy stuff that happened. And they were like, yeah, all this stuff's going to heal you. Read these books, read these books. And then, like, a couple years later, I had to still go to that kind of stuff, and they just, like, forget about it. I'd be like, well, what happened to that book that you said? I mean, I didn't say that to them, but they, it just kind of seemed like they just churn out these things of just being like, okay, this is going to heal you, but you know what? It's not always going to heal you because you're going to have to get this new book. And then after that one you forget about, you're going to have to get this other new one, and then this other new one, and then this other new one. And it's just like this constant... And then after you do that for many, many years and you look back and you go, wait a minute, like, and then it's just strange because then you take that and you go outside and tell other people about it. They're like, what are you even talking about, man? Like, I don't, you know, I'm not going to get that book or something like that, right? And it's just like, I don't know, man. And this is the other reason why I like the scriptures, right? Because it's like just how it's written, you know, verses and just how verses are, how it's just written with the verses, it's easier to remember how there's parts of, and it's like weird because you know i've always liked rpg games right i've always liked rpg games and just the aspect of the classes of like the paladin the cleric like the priest and just there, it, there's just so much lore there, like the lore just runs deep even how we're doing it with all these bible studies 
I mean, we're on what? Episode 471? Like, I literally don't think I could do this with any other book this long. Like, literally looking up things on one single sentence and seeing how much lore you can find on one aspect of it, right? And it's just such a trip because there's so many other books where I it's just like just they just it's there's just not enough lore and I just end up getting bored or it's just like I just end up ultimately just getting bored of it right and it's just for some odd reason there's so many like combos in scripture right and there's so much like like mystery and and, and just there's so much mystery and and then aspects of things that happen in your own life and then you start observing things and then and then all these things start happening and then doors start opening and closing and, and, and you meet other believers and they bring up some mysterious stuff and you go, what in the world, bro? This is a trip, dude. It's like you have been, I don't know, man. It's, 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 a, it's a very interesting journey. Um, but in some cases, I think some people think it's boring as well, right? Because I think that's the other thing is I, th I have heard other people say, oh, well, you know, Christianity is boring and all this stuff, right? I mean... Imagine, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying this is what you should do, but imagine this. Imagine even just like being like, all right, well, let's just go on a crazy journey. Let's just go on a journey. Let's just get rid of everything and let's just just travel around and we'll just travel around other churches and all these different churches and or maybe even just become homeless and just go out and just see like, you know, because that's what happened in Long Beach for me. And it, that was a trip, dude. That was a trip. That was another big aspect of just, like, seeing how the faith is and operates in so many levels of society, from the rich to the poor. And it's, 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 it's wild. It's, it's crazy, man. It's like, the, it's like you can go throughout your own little wilderness expedition if God puts you through that. Um, okay, let's see here. The practical duty. Go ye and preach. The matter is literally left in our hands. Jesus has returned to the throne. Departing, he announces the distinct command. Man, isn't that gnarly? He, this bull, I don't know, this guy is saying this is a command. It's so crazy. Departing, he announces this distinct command, right? And I think what's, what's a trip for me, right? Because when I grew up in the church and all this stuff, sometimes you get this aspect of you think that the pastors are the ones that you should, only, like we shouldn't even be proclaiming the gospel. We as believers, right? But then it's weird because and when I started studying it more and more and more about the Great Commission, literally the Lord wants every believer to go out and try and sow seeds, right? Because we are to seek first his kingdom and, and ultimately in the first parable, what Jesus likens the kingdom to is a person that goes out and sows seeds, right? And the seeds are the word, right? And it's just such a trip, man, right? And if we are to be called to seek first the kingdom, it's interesting when Jesus says stuff like that, right? So we are called to seek first the kingdom. And if, if I think about this right from all the Bible studies we've done on it, we are called to seek first his kingdom. So we are called to ultimately, if we think about the first parable of what the kingdom is likened to, so we are basically called to somehow seek first on how to spread seeds of faith, right? And it's interesting, right? And it's just, it's, uh, and I guess some, in, in some cases, water them. Uh, depending on where people are in their soils, right? Okay, let's see here. There it is, and it is age-long in its application. Preach that is the one gospel weapon. Tell of the name and the work of God. Manifest in the flesh. First evangelize, then disciple the nations. Bring to Christ, then build up in Christ. There are no other orders. Let there be boundless trust in the divine gospel, and it will vindicate itself in every mission field. Let us think imperially of Christ and the church. Our anticipations of success should be worldwide in their sweep. As when they kindle the festival lamps round the dome of St. Peter, there is a first twinkling spot here and another out there. And a gradually they multiply till the outline, the whole in an unbroken ring of light. So one by one men will enter the kingdom, till at last every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. There's that, there's that verse as well. He didn't, you know, every, every knee shall bow and every tongue 
confess that Jesus is Lord. Very interesting, right? Um, let's let's read like a more modern translation, and then we'll we'll uh, um, we'll get to it. I actually I want to kind of see if there's one on. I'm surprised there's not one on Got Questions. Uh, let's look up uh, the the Great Commission Got Questions. The Great Commission Got Questions. Okay, so let's go into this one, right? What is the Great Commission? This is on Got Questions. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 contains what has come to be called the Great Commission. Okay, so this is actually in a different part, right? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus gave this command to the apostles shortly before he ascended into heaven. And it essentially outlines what Jesus expected the apostles and those who followed them to do in his absence. It is interesting that in the original Greek, the only direct command in Matthew 28, 19 through 20 is make disciples. The Great Commission instructs us to make disciples while we are going throughout the world. The instructions to go baptize and teach are indirect commands. Partic participles in the original. How are we to make disciples? By baptizing them and teaching them all that Jesus commanded. Make disciples is the primary command of the Great Commission. Go baptizing and teaching are the means by which we fulfill the command to make disciples. A disciple is someone who receives instruction from another person. A Christian disciple is a baptized follower of Christ, one who believes the teaching of Christ. A disciple of Christ imitates Jesus' example, clings to his sacrifice, believes in his resurrection, possesses the Holy Spirit, and lives to do his work. The command in the Great Commission to make disciples means to teach or train people to follow and obey Christ. Many understand Acts 1 through 8 as part of the Great Commission as well, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Great Commission is enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are to be Christ's witnesses, fulfilling the Great Commission in our cities, Jerusalem, in our states and countries, Judea and Samaria, and anywhere else God sends us, to the ends of the earth. Isn't that gnarly, right? Sometimes I wonder, does that even mean video games? Does that even mean, you know, is that, <laughs> I guess everywhere, right? Everywhere, right? It's, it's a trip. Throughout the book of Acts, we see how the apostles began, began to fulfill the Great Commission, as outlined in Acts 1 and 1 8. First Jerusalem is evangelized, Acts 1 7, 1 through 7. Then the Spirit expands the church through Judea and Samaria, Acts 8 through 12. Finally, the gospel reaches into the ends of the earth, Acts 13 through 28. Today, we continue to act as ambassadors for Christ as we plead on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. We have received a precious gift, the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people, Jude 1, 3. Jesus' words of the Great Commission reveal the heart of God who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2, 4. The Great Commission compels us to share the good news until everyone is heard. Like the servants in Jesus' parable, we are to be about the business of the kingdom, making disciples of all nations. We called his 10 servant, he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come, Luke 19, 13. Man, isn't that true? It's kind of actually a weird thing that got questions actually didn't even mention about the part of seek first the kingdom, right? Where Jesus says, seek first the kingdom. And he says, and then he likens the parable of the first parable of what is the kingdom. The, the kingdom is likened to someone that goes out and sows seeds to the field. It's kind of weird that they didn't put the, it, I mean, I guess maybe those are some combos that I found, but I, I feel like they, I, you know, you think that they would have put them in there, right? I'm surprised that they didn't go and 
put those combos in there, right? Anyway, I guess that was the, the Bible study for today. Uh, let's see, how long was that one? 34 minutes? Okay. I'm going to go use the restroom, and I'll be back, and I'll do a card draw, and we'll get into writing. And I'm going to chug this coffee.
I'll pull back. Okay, let's see. Boom. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, for some reason I'm like tired today, man. Well, we're gonna try and write for a little bit, I guess. I'm tired, bro. I'm like fatigued. Okay, let's uh, check the PSI. <laughs> Fucking chicken tail ups. Right, some of the uh, backyards that I have basically given up on. Oh, what the heck? See, now it's like my brakes aren't even wanting to work. get into it that easy. See that 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 should that, I feel like that was that felt easy to get into right there. Okay, actually today it's feeling pretty good for that trick. I'm gonna film this just in case I land it. Man, I'm stoked. I'm just, okay, I'm just gonna be stoked just for that, man, cause like, bro, I've been after this. Even just cause it felt a little bit easier today. I was like, whoa, that was weird. It felt a tad bit easier when normally it feels impossible, right? Oh wait, this is already charged up. So that's cool. So even if I don't land anything today, I'm gonna be joyous of that right there. Even though it seems ridiculous, right? It's like, why would anybody <laughs> try and learn a trick for years on end <laughs> and not even get close, right? Well, who knows? It just, it feels awesome just like grinding for something. Even, and you think you're never gonna learn it and you could, it just feels a little bit easier today. But I like that. It is cool. All right, what happened to that one song? Oh, shit, here, let me, let me look at that. Let's go back. Here we go. Da 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 dee ba da boo ba dee da ba. Da da ba da boo da ba da dee da ba da boo da ba da. Da da ba da boo da ba da dee da ba da boo da ba da boo. Try attempt number three. Boo ba. You can like hold it. I think that's what I'm doing wrong. You can literally just put your foot down and like kind of like stall it out a little bit.
tight. Now my brakes don't want to work. Look at that. What are you doing? Holy moly, bro. I think my brakes are about to break. My brakes are about to maybe snap off. Is that really loose or something? What are you doing, man? Tripped out, what the heck's going on? working today and all the other days it's just like it's weird because I don't even feel that energetic today and for some reason it's just working kind of more more so than normal Commercials. Um, kind of like listen like some radio stuff. Let's see here. songs I think on here. Actually I think this one doesn't really have that many copyrighted songs. Brakes are like weirded out. I think it's about to break or something. What is going on right here, bro? It's like broken. What is 
doing I'm so right for that. Oh, you know what I can maybe do? I'm wondering if I just put a rubber band right there. It sounds ridiculous, right? But I'm wondering if I put just like a rubber band right there and make it work better. Because like I think that spring's getting all messed up. You know what? We're not gonna do that. We're not even thinking about doing that. Man, that's feeling easier. It's just freaking practicing this a lot. It's weird because I get so burned out. I got so burnt out of it, but I feel like it's working kind of warm. I'm like, I don't know how to land it very good. It's just such an awkward land. Because you know, I need to like Put my foot down, let it scuff down, and then you put you put it down like kind of gently. I like to think that's how you do it. See, because there's also this combo we could even do. Oh, actually, this. Um, swivel to backyard. Swivel to backyard. Mm-hmm. 
Let's see, what did I do wrong with this one? I'm surprised I didn't hurt my knee. I'm glad I've been wearing this brace. I am wearing the gnarly knee brace. photos, albums, recently deleted, select, delete, delete all, let's set the camera back up again, so we have a better definition, if I do end up landing this, okay, let's put it right behind here, That was ridiculous, dude. That was like, I didn't even know how I even landed that. Goodness, dude. I feel like I'm gonna land it, maybe. Ah! Fuck. It's so hard to land for some reason. Because it's like, you know, it just feels weird. Like, you gotta just do this and then somehow just like push it down. And you can't look at it. It's like you're just doing it all behind your back. It's really awkward. Now it's starting to get hard. 
It's like I wonder if it's just because like I had the energy, like the enthusiasm, and now it's just gonna get harder from losing it. Ah. Man, it's like that scuff foot's so important. If you don't have that scuff foot in the right area, like it starts making your bike, you start making your bike lean to one side or the other. You have to have that right scuff pattern. That's what makes it work. It is the scuff pattern. Let's try this uh, funny chicken combo. Put some funky music on. We need the funk. Here's the OST, the original soundtrack. I'm gonna try a funky chicken tail up. So I wanna learn that trick too. Let's give one a go. Oh my goodness, I almost did it. Let's look at the funk. Let's see what that one looked like. That was probably my best attempt at a funky chicken tail up. Let's look at it. Oh my goodness! I almost did it! Oh! Dude, today's weird. What's wrong with- it's like so strange when like, I try to do a trick and it's like, what in the world? I almost kind of did it when the other days just felt extremely difficult. All right, we're gonna attempt to learn the fucking chicken tear whip. <laughs> 